The commander of the Chechen Special Forces Unit, Akhmat Apti Alodinov, tried to describe the situation in the Kursk region into which the Ukrainian armed forces have broken through. The officer told Russian war correspondent Semyon Pegov that the leadership of the Russian Defense Ministry was to blame for everything. At the same time, the youngest general of the Russian army admitted that the Ukrainian army had carried out serious preparations for the action. We calculated all the pros and cons, were ready for everything. Then some of the leaders of the Ministry of Defense deceived, deceived, deceived so much that they deceived themselves. Alodinov emphasized in a video fragment of the statement published on the Telegram channel Ukraine 365. Then the Chechen general began to fantasize, stating that not only Ukrainian soldiers had invaded the Kursk region, but also the Poles as well as the French, and that the entire operation was allegedly commanded by NATO. Alodinov, for his own incomprehensible reasons, expressed confidence that the Ukrainian armed forces units that were withdrawn from the border with Belarus would allegedly be used for the breakthrough. He also unexpectedly stated that the Ukrainian armed forces deserve respect. Units were removed from some areas where some of our commanders were lying and transferred here. They were preparing while we were lying to ourselves. The Chechen general summed up, let us recall that Alodinov himself also lied to himself when he stated on August the 8th that Akhmat did not enter the battle on the border because the Ukrainian Armed Forces Brigades passed by. Earlier on August the 6th, it was the Akhmatovites who fled from their positions in the Kursk region after the first strikes by the Ukrainian Armed Forces. Ukrainian naval forces attacked one of the Russian gas towers in the black on the night leading to August 10, Ukrainian media reported, with reference to Dmitro Pletenchuk, spokesperson of the Ukrainian Navy. The attack on the facility, which houses technical equipment and personnel necessary for reconnaissance, was carried out by a Sea Baby naval drone. At least 40 people in the tower are said to have been killed. Pletenchuk said that a few hours prior to the attack, Russia brought equipment and military personnel onto the platform. There were no civilians there, he stressed. According to the reports, the fire on the gas platform has not been extinguished and as of afternoon, work was underway to put out fire. It should be noted that Sea Baby multi-purpose unmanned surface vehicle, which can cover a distance of a thousand kilometers, has the capacity to carry 900 kilograms of explosives. Russia has accused Britain of being behind Ukraine's remarkable military operation in the Kursk region. Adalbi Shkagoshev, a member of the State Duma Committee of Russia, told Russian media outlets, Britain participated in all such sorties. English was heard. According to the Daily Mail, former British military intelligence officer Philip Ingram said, the mini-invasion targeted an area where Russian defenses are weak. Ukraine has embarrassed Putin and the Russian military. They've brought the war to ordinary Russians and set the conditions for negotiations. It is too early to tell Ukraine's ultimate objectives, but on the surface it could be a masterstroke if they can continue the advance and hold off Russian counterattacks. He added, Ukrainian incursions into Russian territory have been extremely rare since Russia launched its full-scale invasion in February 2022. Ukrainian MP Oleksiy Honcharenko said on Facebook that while he did not know what the plan behind the incursion was, it would show Europeans and Americans that Russia can and needs to be attacked. Russia's military response to the incursion will be one of Andrei Belusov's first big leadership tests as the country's new defense minister after he replaced his long-serving predecessor, Sergei Shoigu, in May. The Pentagon has expressed no concern regarding the advance of Ukrainian forces in Russia's Kursk Oblast, the Pentagon's press service reports. No, because at the end of the day, Ukraine is fighting for its sovereign territory that its neighbor invaded. So if we want to de-escalate tensions, as we've said from the beginning, the best way to do that is Putin can make that decision today to withdraw troops from Ukraine. Sabrina Singh, deputy spokesperson for the Pentagon, stated when asked about the potential escalation of tensions due to Ukrainian forces entering Kursk Oblast. The Pentagon spokesperson stressed that Ukraine is doing everything possible to continue liberating its sovereign territory and the events in Kursk Oblast fit into this scenario. We're going to continue to support Ukraine with the capabilities and the systems that they need. We don't feel that this is escalatory in any way. Ukraine is doing what it needs to do to be successful on the battlefield, Singh said.
The spokesperson emphasized that Ukraine's advance in Kursk Oblast aligns with U.S. policy, though she noted that the U.S. remains opposed to long-range strikes on Russian territory.